Your Creative Push, episode 66. Like, this is your chance. You can be the best version of yourself if only you believe that it's possible. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Brooke Shaden. Brooke is a fine art photographer, author, and motivational speaker from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. She grew up near the Amish country until attending Temple University. Brooke was photographically born in December 2008 after graduating from Temple with bachelor degrees in film and English. Self-portraiture for her is not autobiographical in nature. Instead, she places herself within environments she wishes to explore, where secrets are exposed, impossibilities are tested, and life is questioned in eras beyond our own. Brooke works to capture fantastic realities within her photographic frame. By using painterly techniques, as well as the square format, traditional photographic properties are replaced by otherworldly elements. Brooke, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, and I have to start out by asking you why you consider yourself as having t- two birth dates, one natural and one photographic. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. I really am excited to do this. And, you know, when I was thinking about my evolution as a photographer, it felt honestly like a second birth, almost like a rebirth, because I had my whole life been the person who was just not very good at things. I mean, I was not good at school. I didn't excel in that way. I, I wasn't the best at sports. I wasn't, I just didn't have a thing really. And my sister was always really artistic and that was her thing. So when I finally found photography, it felt like a rebirth because it was like, I found something that I could maybe excel at or at least pursue with a lot of passion. And that was really exciting for me. And what would you say was like the moment where you were kind of uh, birthed? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the first day that I picked up my camera, my friend had called me up. She was living in a different state and she said, let's just start doing self portraits and we can send them to each other. And then it's like, we're hanging out. So I started doing self portraits and in my sort of little world, that was like the biggest release for me because I had just finished college. So nobody was telling me what to do or what I had to do or what I couldn't create. And so from that first day, it was honestly sort of like, I I felt like that would be my life from then on. And then it Mm -hmm. wasn't until about a month later that I moved um, across the country and um, sort of started a new life for myself. But it was quickly evident that photography would morph into the thing that I would continue to pursue. I love it. And so you're you're a very special artist and I, I can't wait to get into the kind of your creative process and, you know, how you kind of get the inspiration to do what you do. But you're kind of the perfect guest for this podcast because you, you're one of those creative people who has like already answered all the questions I'm going to ask with your, your different mediums. It's like mm-hmm. you, you want to infect everyone else, like the sick yes. people who come to work anyway, like you want to infect them with your creativity and like you want to kind of help them along as they're sick with this like bug that you've given them, <laughs> which I love. Um, So I, I guess this is like a two part question, but I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about like kind of writing and what that means to you and a little bit about your, your, your blog promoting passion. Yeah. Well, when I was very, very young, um, like single digits, I always wanted to be a writer. That was my thing. Like I I thought that maybe I'd be a journalist or maybe I would write novels or maybe short stories. And then I focused on poetry for a long time. And so from a very young age, I said to myself, well, I either want to be a writer or if I fail at being a writer, then I want to teach writing. And so those Mm. are the two things that were always on my mind until I discovered filmmaking and then until I discovered um, photography. But really writing has always been my creative outlet. It's the thing that I feel most authentic doing. And so when I started photography, it felt natural to start a blog because that was just one way that I could incorporate writing into what I was known for professionally. So I started promoting passion and that really for me was just sort of my way of letting everybody know who I am and and what I'm doing here. And I think that everybody has a very special, very unique voice. And I happen to feel comfortable expressing mine through writing. And so that's what I do. And on the flip side, your YouTube channel, uh, could you talk about that? Like how the differences between that and, and your blog? Yeah, well, so I have always 
hated public speaking, like so mm-hmm. much that I researched colleges that I could go to <laughs> where they didn't force you to do public speaking. <laughs> and, um, and so it was always the thing that scared me most in the world. And mm-hmm. I started photography, I started teaching photography, and that in itself was a hurdle, just being able to speak to a small group of people. And then one day I decided that the my love for um, expressing my message and expressing um, who I truly am was greater than my fear of public speaking. And I thought that video would be the best way to communicate with visual people, with people who liked photography or liked the visual arts. So I started a YouTube channel where I could just basically pretend that, you know, my camera was a friend standing in front of mm. me or whoever's watching and, and share my insights, my failures, my successes, anything that I had going on at the moment and do that really vulnerably. I love it. And do, do you do that all by yourself? Yeah. Um, I see, I also have a lot of social anxiety, so I don't like working with a team if I can avoid it in general. I'm mm-hmm. also very, very bossy. So it works mm-hmm. out to just losing <laughs> myself. So, uh, yeah, so I just set up my camera and, uh, sometimes I'll set up two cameras if I want different angles, but I set it up and stand in front of it and start talking and hope that it records. And honestly, sometimes it doesn't. And then I kind of want to throw my camera out the window, but <laughs> it usually works out. Yeah, so for anybody listening, you definitely, definitely have to check out her YouTube channel and and the blog, um, especially the YouTube channel. Though I think it's, I don't know, it's it's impressive what you do. Um, you're very able to eloquently kind of show what you do, um, and also you kind of definitely open up about like kind of your fears and um, just the whole creative process. It's just a really, really awesome channel because a lot of people, a lot of artists, kind of set up these supplementary these things but they don't keep up with them you know you'll yeah. you know you'll check out their blog and you know they haven't updated in a couple of years which is fine i totally get it i haven't updated my blog and i'm a writer <laughs> for <laughs> a few months once i started the podcast um so i totally get that so huge props to you for being able to do that and being able to do it so eloquently oh well, thank you yeah how do, how do you do it though <laughs> <laughs> like how do you find the time to like juggle all those all those different things and still produce like awesome art well, I'm not really the kind of person that likes to pull all nighters and and stay up really late and like, you know, cram all this work in. I, I I'm a very much against the I don't know, glorification of busyness. Like I really don't like that. So, um, so I just try to sort of plan out my whole week ahead of time and I'll make like one day dedicated to videos and I'll just focus on that all day and maybe produce three or four videos. And then the next day I'll focus on just conceptualization and the next day, just shooting and the next day, just editing and then just business. And, um, I just really like to have structure and, And I really like to, you know, stop work at, you know, like seven o'clock and make dinner and watch Indiana Jones or something. So, yes. (laughs) (laughs) No, yeah, it's 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 definitely good advice to be able to kind of plan it out like that. I'm sure it's tough to kind of squeeze everything in. And and I know how like video editing and and writing and editing the writing can kind of add up and snowball. So but I think that that's why it's so great to um, to really know what your business is like to really know what you want to be focusing on because the more you just put your effort into those things and you say no more often to the things that don't serve you then suddenly you find yourself filled with all of these things that you love and the time to do it because that's what people are waiting for then if you produce that work exactly i love it i I feel like you have it's like in general people have like a bucket of like energy that like they can only have one bucket that they can pour into like these little cups or these little tubes of of the different things that they want to get to and the more you spread yourself thin like the less time you have for each one and the less energy you have for each one so when you can pick uh, certain ones and that you really are passionate about it's almost like you have a bigger bucket then and you can focus on what you're pouring it into exactly and what would you kind of suggest to somebody who because I myself and a lot of podcasters actually are introverts and kind of have social anxiety, which is very strange. Yeah. Um, so I definitely I definitely feel you when you're saying that, you know, treating like the, the camera or the microphone like a friend and kind of forgetting about the fact that there's like an audience that's going to eventually be listening to it. Yeah. How do you kind of get over that or start to get over that? Well, I think I think that the moment that we accept our perhaps weaknesses or what we see as weaknesses and just sort of turn them into strengths and we have control over those things. And that's probably one reason why, you know, maybe people who, who do podcasts are introverts because 
it might just be that we feel so like outsiders or so like we can't connect with people that we need to take control and just say, okay, here I am, take it or leave it instead of trying to fit into another person's group. And that's how I feel about creating video content or blogs or really any art form is that if I am in control of what I'm saying and I can put that content out there however I want, then suddenly people go to you instead of you having to go to them. And that for Mm. me takes the edge off a little bit. Mm, I love that. Um, could you tell me a little bit about Phoenix? Um, it's one of my favorite pieces of your work. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that story and what kind of what that means to you? Yeah, absolutely. I created Phoenix, um, a few years ago when I was in New York and I was with my uh, sister-in-law and I had found this abandoned greenhouse. And so I was teaching a workshop that day. And when the workshop ended, I was still really inspired and didn't really want everybody to leave yet. So I asked them if they would go across the street to this abandoned building. So we all went across (laughs) the street and, um, And I had scouted it earlier, so I knew that there was this amazing red door just floating in this water. And I asked my sister-in-law if she would sort of strip down and jump in this water, which was just (laughs) disgusting. I mean, like black stagnant glass on the bottom. It was Uh, really horrible, but she did it. And it was cold and... Oh, it was just, it was really, really nasty, but she did it. And, um, and so it was a really good moment because everybody who I spent the day with could sort of take shots all around the building. We spent an extra two hours together. And in the end, it ended up being the most meaningful shot of that trip for me, because to me, the idea of the Phoenix rising again and and falling to ashes and, and becoming something new is... I think the most inspiring concept in the world. It's the concept that everybody can relate to. Everybody fails, everybody succeeds, everybody falls and has to get back up. And so if I can portray that in a single image, and even if just one person understands that message, then I feel like that could be inspiration for somebody to pick themselves back up no matter where they are in their life. Yeah, I love that. It's when you're talking about how you had like a a, a second birth with photography. Yeah. It's a, that's kind of the image that I thought of. Of you know, you're just coming out of the ground. It's like a, a rebirth for for sure. Definitely, I love it. Um, and how about capturing inspiration? Because that's one of my other favorite pieces. Yeah, with the uh, the train coming out. Absolutely. So that image, um, that was actually shot for a music artist who is pictured in the image. Her name is Lucy Schwartz. And she and I had been sort of collaborating on um, album art and what we could possibly create that would be unique and different and dreamy and surreal. And so I had this idea to shoot with a train coming out of the wall. And in my world, I'm usually all about compositing. So if I don't have to spend a lot of money or, or you know, uh, like go get a giant train, then I won't. But in this case, <laughs> we found a company who would deliver this train that was, it's the size that you see in the picture. Oh, so wow. we were able to have the train in the room and they set up tracks and I lit um, a smoke bomb so that it would look like it was puffing smoke. Oh, cool. And then in the end, I ended up putting... Um, some wallpaper on the wall and post and the tear in the wall and post. But a lot of it was done there. And that was really special to me. And I came up with this title capturing inspiration, because for me in that room, watching the smoke emitter go off and the train really there and having her music blasting in the room, it was sort of just that moment of feeling like I had captured the inspiration that I set out to do. Do you always try to kind of surround yourself with your inspirations like that, like to capture it in that way, like with everything you do, or is that just kind of a, like a once, like that only happened that one time? It depends really. Um, a lot of what I do just can't be done with my budget all in one place, which is sad to me. I mean, I hope that one day I can do more and more set design and stuff like that. But the thing is that I think that for any artist, when you get, really excited about an idea, then you get very caught up in it in the moment. And I'm Mm -hmm. doing so many self portraits that when I start shooting, no matter like I could be in my bedroom taking a picture and then later I'll put myself in the desert say, but in that moment in the room, I feel like I'm in the desert and I feel like I'm really there and I get so lost in it that it's just all encompassing. And that's what I love about creating. And what could you kind of talk about with, with the self portrait or like, self portraiture which is the hardest word to say in the world <laughs> yes. um, how kind of did that start and like what does that mean to you when i started photography in general um i was doing self portraits because 
well, many reasons. I was too scared to ask anybody else to model for me. I didn't really have a lot of friends near me. I, um, I wanted full control. I didn't want to give that up to somebody else. And I just didn't know how the photography world worked. When I started, I did not have any clue that you could make money from photography. Like that's how removed I was from the mm. whole photo thing. So when I started, I was doing self portraits and I thought that was totally fine and normal only to realize that most people don't do self portraits or that that is not a typical way of creating. But to me, self portraiture is just the best way of expressing who I am and being able to do that in the most genuine way while keeping control of the whole creative situation, which I think is amazing. So I started doing self-portraiture. I then transitioned into shooting more models because I thought that's what you were supposed to do. And then quickly realized that that's just not for me. And so now I still do about 80% of my work is self-portraits. Yeah. You might as well stick with what works, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it, that's a really interesting answer. And um, Joel Robison was on the show before, and he he puts himself in, in his pictures as well, sort of like self portraiture, but more like he's just a part of it. Yeah. And he he had the same kind of answer where he he didn't want to work with anybody else really to start out, and especially when he didn't quite know exactly what he was going to do. And yeah. I kind of love that idea of like going on your own, you know, and just figuring it out yourself. And if you have to use yourself, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. And it's a really amazing way of sort of accepting yourself as well, because I know there are many times where I'd put myself in front of the camera and think, oh, I hate how my body looks or, oh, I'm not the right person to do this. But sometimes you know, creating art is about finding the character that you're trying to portray and asking yourself, am I the right person to portray that character? And if not, how can I write a story that I fit into that I can portray? And mm. that was a really sort of big learning moment for me. I love that. Is there a particular self portrait of yours that you feel like really captures exactly who you are without having to like put any extra uh, effort into it? Yes. Um, there's an image of mine called the falling of autumn darkness. And it's an image where it's just um, my back, like I'm just walking away from the camera into darkness. And there's uh, my hair is made up of leaves. And it's a really simple image. But to me, it entirely captures my essence of being connected to nature of the colors that I feel like I see the world in and just all those little details. It just sort of I don't know. It's me in a picture. I love it. I'm glad that you were able to capture that. I was hoping you would have one that, that really fit you. Yeah. Aside from kind of the things that we've already talked about with uh, kind of the social awkwardness and not wanting to work with teams and stuff like that, are there any other things that kind of held you back from being creative initially and maybe still do on a daily basis? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that I think that there are two things that have consistently held me back. And the first one is wanting to produce really dark and sometimes creepy art and knowing that there's going to be a backlash for that. And some mm -hmm. days I wake up and I'm like, who cares? Like, you know, screw those people who don't like it. I'm going to do it anyways. And then other days I wake up and I feel like, oh, no, I'd rather not offend anybody today or I'd rather not really push the envelope. And so it's those days where I need to just push past that and say, you know what, my vision is my vision. And it doesn't matter who's going to like it or who's going to hate it. And to remember that no matter what you're creating, somebody will probably not like it and somebody probably will like it and it's not up to me to decide how many people are on either side of the debate it's just up to me to create it and put it out there and let the work be enhanced by you know releasing it and then the other thing that holds me back which i think is a very common problem is that i started sharing my work on social media and i started becoming used to you know comments and and likes and stuff like that and so it's always just that age-old question of um you know, will people like this? And if, you know, is this what people want to be seeing on social media and trying to fight that urge to please everybody online? Well, I think that more people are on the side of, of loving it than, than hating it and giving a backlash for it. But <laughs> I, I also agree that the, the more there is that kind of debate and the more that there is people on either side, I feel like the more you're in tune with what you're supposed to be doing, because if it's something that nobody will really have any kind of conversation or debate about, I feel like you're not really doing your job necessarily as an artist, especially when you're trying to create dark images that create discussion. Exactly. I agree completely. Could you take us back to your, maybe your, one of your best or most triumphant creative moments and tell us that story? Yeah, let's see. Oh, golly. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one. 
So most triumphant creative moment. Um, I guess I've had a few sort of milestones creatively um, over the years. And there were two instances in the last year, I think, that really pushed my my creativity forward. And I think that's so important. So one was this year, actually, I or I guess end of last year, I made the commitment to create in a much different way to stop creating so much work so frequently and to really slow down and spend time on um, a new series. And so the last four or five months, I've been um, building a set in my studio and taking a very long time to shoot a series in there, which I won't be releasing until next year. And that is such a different way of working for me to slow down and really just be okay with maybe losing social media followers or um, not producing work consistently for the benefit of creating work that's more fulfilling to me. So that was a really big one um, in the last year. And then another one, which was just sort of a fun moment in my life, was I went to Iceland with a big group of people, and we were just all sort of on photo vacation together. And oh, nice. we ended up going to the Glacier Lagoon in Iceland, where I it was midnight, and we all pulled up in our RVs, and the sun was still out because it's Iceland in the summer. And so we got there, and in sort of the twilight um, of the evening, um, I, I put on some fisherman's waders and then put a dress on and then waded out into the glacier water and did a self portrait there. And it was a really interesting moment in my life because it was so cold, like so bitter cold in that water that it was, I'm sure, dangerous, but it forces you to sort of go inward and calm yourself and, and be in the moment to be able to withstand it. And so doing that and having that experience and then looking back and seeing all of my 20 photographer friends all snapping pictures from the shore, it was just a really good creative moment to know that I can push myself and expand my awareness and, and really just grasp the the creativity that I'm looking for it was a really good moment for that and so I'll never forget it I love that and I think it's a good analogy for kind of jumping into creativity as well it's just like putting putting yeah. on what you need to do putting on the the the, pr the pretty dress and putting on the protective uh <laughs> pants yeah. kind of and, and jumping into the cold water you know exactly kind of going along with that what would you say that creativity and photography and art uh, and even writing uh brings to your life Oh, what doesn't it, you know? I mean, I think that mm. art is just the best way of understanding yourself. And the better we understand ourselves, the more fulfilled our life can be. I think that whenever I meet somebody who's at a crossroads or who's frustrated with their life or who feels like they can't move forward, it's almost always because they haven't been honest with who they want to be as a person. And art, writing, photography, no matter what you're doing, forces you to ask that question of who do I want to be and how can I portray that? Um, especially the business of creating art as well. So I think that for me, writing and photography and making videos and whatever I'm doing, um, every single time I put pen to paper or I pull out my camera, it's that question of who am I now? Who do I want to be? And how will I portray that? And that is the biggest gift. And what would you, what would be the first step for somebody to try to figure out who they want to be? Because I think that's one of the hardest things to kind of figure out, especially when it's like kind of this amorphous thing that, you know, changes mm -hmm. on a daily or a, or, or a yearly basis, um, especially with your kind of art identity. Yeah. How do you how do you kind of begin to, to find out who you are? Well, I think that the, the one of the best things that you can do is to uh, remember that it will change because so many people get so caught up in saying, well, how could I possibly define who I want to be if that might change? And it's fine if that changes and it's fine if who you think you want to be turns out to not be true. But to me, it's about putting all the excuses aside you know, not saying, well, I have this job that I'm going to be in for a year, so I can't really think about that right now. Or, um, you know, I don't know how to create the art that I want to create, so I'm not going to think about that right now. It's about putting those excuses aside and being truly honest with yourself about what makes you happiest in life. I mean, if you could do, you know, one thing every day, what would that thing be? If you could create a piece of art that is your absolute 
dream piece of art, what would that be? And just asking yourself, what are the answers to those questions without worrying about what are your logistics right now? What are the things that are going to hold you back? Once you lay those terms out, then suddenly you can create all of these very, very small, tiny goals that lead up to becoming that person. And that's what I'm trying to do every day. I'm by no means who I want to be in life. I mean, I wish that I could spend more time doing charity work and I wish that I could give back to others more. And I'm not there yet, but I know who I want to be for now. So I'm working at small goals to try to achieve that. I love it. That's the perfect answer. The logistics are always the thing that kind of, you know, holds you back from, you know, filling up the buckets as I was kind of talking about before, you know, it, it takes so much of that, you know, that liquid gasoline that you have to kind of fulfill your life and yeah it's yeah. it's just a matter of kind of trying to ignore that the the surrounding things of your life um, when it comes to your art or your creativity and just kind of going full force yeah there's a really awesome quote by joseph campbell that says the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are and i love that mm. quote because it's it's so poignant it's it's just saying flat out, like, this is your chance. You can be the, the best version of yourself if only you believe that it's possible. And I just, I love keeping that mantra in mind. Yeah, I want to like hang that up on my wall. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Brooke, we are running out of time, unfortunately. So okay. it is time for the final push. And this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today that's thinking, you know, maybe I can do this too. Maybe I can figure out who I am and maybe I can start with my art and give them that your best of words of advice and, and push them into doing it. Absolutely. So when I started photography, I was not much different in a sense than I am now because I had no idea what I was doing and I still generally have no idea what I'm doing, which is a good thing because it means that we're growing and expanding and learning. But when I started out, I had this sense that I could do anything. And then you start to get into the industry a little bit or you start to take pictures. And that's when you start to lose your confidence. You see other people doing things that are amazing. And you see, you know, all of these professionals who are at this pinnacle that you wish you could reach and you feel like you never can. And I've been criticized so many times by people saying, well, you don't know how to use studio lights. So you're never going to be a professional or, you know, your business is based on just shooting pictures of yourself. Why do you think anybody would want to buy that? And all these people telling me all the reasons why what I do will not succeed. But the fact is that I'm still shooting in my bedroom against a white wall 90% of the time these days. And if that's how I like to create, then that is a perfectly fine way of creating. And thus far, I've been able to forge a career out of doing the things that I love. And I don't say that to sound conceited in any way, because I don't mean it like that. But all I mean to say is that I planned a life for myself and I'm trying my best to live it. And nobody out there can tell you that that's not a valid way to live your life. So whatever you feel you need to be doing in your life, do it and forge your own path and let others follow in your footsteps. Brooke, would you like to host this podcast? You're <laughs> that's great. That's perfect. I would love to. <laughs> cool. Uh, Maybe uh, I'll take a day off and you and you can take the reins. <laughs> I love it. I'll come over and we'll do it together. Oh, uh, sounds good. Uh, Brooke, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for giving us the push. Oh, thank you so much. I enjoyed it immensely. Oh, great. Um, and you can find Brooke on her website, which is brookshaden.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-E-S-H-A-D-E-N.com. Um, you can find her on Instagram, Flickr, Twitter, and YouTube which I definitely recommend YouTube, um, all Brooke Shaden. Uh, and on Facebook, she is Brooke Shaden Photography. And definitely check her out on Facebook as well. When when you, uh, What I love about you is you post your art, your images, but you also tell the story behind it, which I, I really appreciate. And it makes the art really come to life. So yeah. definitely check that out. Also, you can find her on her blog, which is promotingpassion.com. And I think that you made an announcement today, Brooke. Yes, um, I announced a convention that I'm hosting. It's sort of like my my dream place of just getting a whole bunch of creative weirdos together, which is my favorite term <laughs> because it just means people who are a little different doing something a little bit different. So it's just a gathering of like-minded creatives to learn about photography and storytelling and inspiration and motivation all together. Why not take on one other task, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Start a convention. I love it. <laughs> 
So cool. Uh, Brooke, thank you again so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, man. I loved every second of that. Thank you so much, Brooke, for coming on the show. You know, something that really struck me that Brooke said was how people don't even start because they're too afraid of the fact that they're going to change. How can I even start trying to figure out who I am if if who I am is going to change by the time I'm done doing my art? And you should really embrace that, you know? With almost every single creative thing that I have done, um, the end result has not been what I expected it to be. Sometimes it's been close and sometimes it's been very far off. But it's in the process of actually doing it that you really realize what the thing is that you're trying to create. It can start out as this kind of grand amorphous idea that you can't quite grasp. Um, But the fact that it's malleable and, and you can't quite comprehend it shouldn't be the thing that stops you from doing it. It should be the thing that makes you the most excited to get into it, to start messing around with it and and trying to make it congeal, you know, to try to make it into this solid thing that you can figure out and that you can actually put out into the world instead of kind of maybe having the courage to, to tell people about. Like Brooke said, there's going to be naysayers. There's going to be people that tell you, you know, you can't do this for whatever reason, but you know in your heart that this is the thing that you want to do, you know? You do want to do it this crazy, weird way that's maybe too simplistic for some people. Maybe it's too crazy for some people. Maybe it's too complicated for some people. Maybe it's too dark for some people. Like Brooke said, she thinks that her work sometimes is. You gotta ignore that. Some people are gonna like it. Some people are not gonna like it. Um, But all that matters is that your brain likes it and your heart likes it. And it probably won't be what you set out to do in the first place. And that is more than okay. That's perfect. In fact, if it is exactly what you think it's going to be, you probably didn't let yourself go in the process. You probably let those voices tell you exactly what to do during the creation process. And that's not what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to listen to those outside influences. You're just supposed to listen to your heart. So just go with your heart. I know it's much easier said than done, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of encouragement there. But definitely just don't let those things hold you back. You're going to be different when you come out the other end of creating it, and that's a good thing. So just do it. Go forge your own path, and others will follow in your footsteps, as Brooke said. On tomorrow's show, we have Philip Ruddy. Who you are, the first... 17, 18 years of your life is really who your your family thinks you are, who your childhood friends think you are. It takes a lot of courage to kind of transcend that initial orbit, you know, and uh, and become something different. You know, Carl Jung talks a lot about the pressure that children feel to to carry on the unlived lives of their parents. That that is such a heavy, heavy power that. Parents, even with good intentions, uh, can lay upon us. To reinvent ourselves, to become who we are destined to be, takes an incredible amount of strength. And that's why, again, I talk about this idea of gather your tribe around you. It's not necessarily the people that you were, the family that you were born into, the friends that are around you. You need to identify that, seek them out. Your tribe is out there waiting for you to join them, but it takes a lot of effort and energy. You got to take that first step and, and go find them and you will be embraced. Philip is a depth psychotherapist who used to be a a writer, producer, and development exec in Hollywood. He's now a therapist that works with writers, artists, and performers and helps them look at and transcend their creative blocks as well as anxiety and depression. And I had a really, really fascinating conversation with him. We have a pretty cool story about the synchronicity that kind of brought us together. And I learned a lot in the episode as well about getting over certain blocks that that hold me back personally, as well as uh, people in general. So it's definitely a really cool episode to check out. Something a little bit different, but at the same time, very similar to what we all go through. And I think that, you know, every single creative person can really relate to what we talk about. So definitely a cool episode that I'm really looking forward to you checking out. But that is all I got for you today. So hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. And we, of course, will be here for you tomorrow if you need the push again. Have a great and productive day, and we will catch you tomorrow. Bye.